from San Francisco, California. This is the Rock and Roll Geek Show. This is the story of my rock and roll butler. <clears throat> hey, Ricky Dover, how you doing? I'm great. How are you, man? Thank um, you for the beer. Oh, no problem. The Tip album, the first two tip, uh, two tip albums are great. Yes, I went to you. see them last year. Oh, cool. That this thing. What do you? By the way, what do you think about this thing? All these podcasters. Oh, it's fun, man. Um, I've known Chris for a little while, and oh, yeah, just kind of. Um, yeah, it's been kind of around on the scene and just kind of a pretty strong online presence and such. And it was like, yeah, I think it's cool. I think it's great that, um, you know, it just kind of shows that there is like a market for, you know, all this, you know, rock and roll music, man. And people want to talk about it and just like, yeah, with radio and such, not really blending, you know, it's such like clear channel, you know, the same playlists and whatnot. And so I think, uh, you know, when I listen to radio or something, I tune really gen- Generally, independent radio or anything else that's just not what everybody else is like. You listen to podcasts? Into. I do. I've just gotten like more into them recently, just because of uh, traveling on the road. What man. do you listen to? What podcasts you listen um, to? Well, <laughs> not not many, man. I'm just like just cracking Here, the surface. Say that. With, say that. Yes, one Rock and Roll Geek there you go. Show <laughs> is the best podcast. Yeah, there you go. In the world. So I went to see that they had the pre-party last year and the tip played. Oh, okay, cool. Right and around. you weren't in the band. I didn't know oh, you okay. weren't in the band when I. Because uh, those two tip albums are like some of my favorite albums. Oh wow, thanks, man. Yeah, um, but they were they really they had that Denman kid on. Yeah, I love play. Mm. <clears throat> But uh, they weren't the same without you in the band. Uh, <laughs> you know, I think I sent you a message and said they really need you back in oh. the band. <laughs> well, thank you, man. Why uh, do you leave the tip? Is the biters a better? Uh, um, well, it was. Um, you know, I love those guys. They're my brothers, and we still, you know, talking to each other from around uh, around town all the time, and. Uh, it really was kind of. Uh, I think I was just kind of wanting to. Were they pissed off when you left? Well, I would have been bummed out. It's kind of. Because uh, you and that Carl guy, oh, or yeah, you and Benny, Benny yeah. you and Benny, mm-hmm. had a great. You were great together on thanks. stage. Yeah, we definitely <clears> had a lot cool of great. Cool rock and roll vibe. Yeah, so. thanks, man. We had a lot of great times, and I think it was just kind of. Uh, I don't know. For me personally, it was uh, yeah, like a lot of partying and such, like all the time. And I really, oh, yeah. eventually, just kind of like, man, I feel like shit. And I'm like, uh, I just feel terrible. Just saying, you know, the only thing to get out of that is to like, you know, keep throwing back into like, you know, drinking and partying all the time. So I kind of got a little burned out just from like, you know, there's a couple of nights where just like, oh yeah, dude, let's get cheeseburger pizza at 5 a.m. and let's, you know. You know, and I was like, Ugh. and I just like eat the whole thing and wake up the next day. I'm like, oh, dude. So God, were you looking so for something else, or did Tuck come um, and approach you? That was like totally out of the blue, man. Um, yeah. So um, yeah, what's it? We had some, you know, we had already, yeah. So we did two albums, and it's like, okay, now what? Yeah. And so it's like, okay, so then it's kind of then of what direction to really go, and so. Um, uh, and Tuck probably tours more around the world, and you well, know, yeah, Tip well, I'd plays met, like I had, um, regionally, but. Yeah, so I'd known Biters for a while. I yes. played in a band in Atlanta called The Booze, and that was label mates with Biters. And so I met them. Uh, I met Biters in about 2010, and uh, when they were Biters was like less than a year old. In fact, they were opening up for my old band, and so we were label mates. So we did a uh, uh, some touring together, like West Coast and several East Coast runs. And, yeah, what label uh, was that? It was just called Underrated, oh, okay, and yeah. um, it's long gone now. Um, but some of the Biters stuff is getting repressed, and um, and I just have a you know. A handful of old CDs from my old band that I just put up online for sale whenever. Um, yeah, so I met him down there, and so I just known him for a long time. Just kept in contact, and so they were a great, you know, uh, contacts. You know, get down to Atlanta any time, and uh, it was okay. um, yeah. And so, and they, they would stay with me anytime that they're uh, in Nashville, and so. Um, yeah, things just kind of. Um, is that Tuck's uh, brother? Was that the bass player? Was that uh, Tuck's brother? Yeah, so Travis was in the band and uh, for a while, and then uh, it's got Philip uh, replaced Travis. And, oh yeah, that's right. They got um, that long haired kid. Yeah, the long haired guy, and he sings. And both Travis and Philip sing amazing, like perfect pitch harmony all the time. And I'm kind of like more lower register, middle register kind of harmony. So, uh, and guitar is kind of normally my thing. Um, but it's still like, man, this is a great opportunity, and so. Um, you have to buy a bass. Uh, I already had one. Uh-huh. Uh, I did have to buy a Biter's like patch and put it on a jacket. Oh, yeah, so right, the, yeah. the Biter's patch jacket does oh, not they, come. Oh, with they had they the you members. had to, they sell you the patch. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, honestly, I bought it online because they didn't have any. 
like they didn't have any ones to give so yeah. I had to like buy them just so, like an any fan would and, and same with CDs uh, for some like radio stations in, in, in Knoxville where I'm from and um, yeah I bought merch as a fan because I was a fan for so long and uh, yeah so the opportunity uh, came up and I was just kind of uh, adrift for maybe about like two weeks and then all of a sudden like um, I kind of been talking to talk a little bit like off and on because honestly I thought maybe Dixie we might have joined Biters or something or, or oh, whatever. Why did they need a drummer um, too? Well, we had just kind of, I don't know, there was just like things were just kind of up I in the, the air the band sometimes. was going to maybe break up or something. Well, yeah, there's kind of like, well, what ended up happening is, you know, I joined Biters. And yeah. so, yeah. and, uh, and so. Did yeah. Biters get a new drummer too? Uh, no, still Joey. Yeah, so Matt and Joey, and they've been there since day one with Duck, which is awesome. So, yeah, so I've known them just as long as I've known Tuck. And so, yeah, the opportunity came about and I was like, Tuck texted me and I was like, all right, man, well, let me think on it and I'll give you an answer in the morning. And then like about five minutes went by and I was like, oh shit, I got to say yes to this. I can't say no. And this then, is like one of the opportunities to like in your life if you don't like. You were know, you already out of the tip by then? or? Uh, yeah, I guess for about, uh, for about two weeks so you or just so. just quit and you were bandless and you quit. Well, yeah, it was kind of, um, we kind of, at the language was kind of like, well, well, well the band just, was just not doing so, anything at the well, moment. Well, yeah, it was just kind of like moving in a different direction that I wanted to go. <laughs> yeah. And like, I, I kind of wanted to focus a little bit more on, you know, songs and uh, and writing and production and, and, and spend more time with that. And uh, and then by then we had like kind of a, some different members in the band. So it was just kind of like before it was really just kind of like Benny and I just kind of bouncing ideas like one, you no, know, there's like either yes or no. And then, uh, and then we kind of, you know, changed and had a different lineup. So then it kind of like changed the social dynamic, or whatever. And then I was kind of like get a little burned out of like just partying and being sick and tired of sick and tired. And so just when the yeah, you guys are kind of like up and still into it, and still have the energy to you know keep partying and um, yeah. And so they're great guys. I love them to death. They're so insanely talented. Uh, I love them. They're still doing great. And um, yeah, Benny, uh, Dixie, and. Robbie and they're not uh, going to listen. They're not listening band. to this, so don't worry about it. <laughs> so, and I'm not going to contact them. So. You know what was cool about those yeah. those tip records is at the, after the song ends, or you think the song ends, and then it has like this guitar shredding. It's badass. It's oh, thanks, man. Part. Yeah, we really worked a lot on that first album. <laughs> it kind of um, reminded me of uh, like um, of, of Get Your Wings. Oh, sweet. Thanks, man. Yeah, we worked so much on that first album, man, because really when I started jamming with uh, uh, Vinny and Dixie. It was just, yeah, the three of us, and we were just kind of just jamming on blues songs and smoking weed and taking some Adderall and just like, just jamming. And we had a blast, Oh, you get man. high off Adderall? <laughs> you get a little speedy. Oh, right, and, okay. uh, I never take them, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and so, um, yeah, and so sure enough, we were like, dang, do we, I, right, yeah, we just wrote a song, like, cool. Yeah, so that's a song, let's do it again. When you were in the so. tip, did you have a day job? Um, not at that time. So right before then, probably like six months before that, uh, I was working at United Record Pressing here in Nashville. Which uh -huh. like they press vinyl records, right. and so um, yeah, I was working there, and I worked there for almost like three years. And then I just come in one day, and they're like, and I put man, I was like working as an accountant uh, in a windowless cubicle. Oh, is that what you do? Are you a CPA guy? Not really. No, man. I'm a rock and roller, man. And uh, but I just I was moving that working at United got me to Nashville. Um, and really, because I, I went to MTSU and Murfreesboro, and I'm from Knoxville in East Tennessee, and so Murfreesboro kind of put me in the area, and then, uh, yeah, and then once I got done with uh, school, went down to Atlanta, met uh, Biders down there, and then moved uh, back up here, got a job at United, and worked there for about three years, and I was still gigging, like, out, you know, at night with, uh, with bands, and and such, and it's really doing, of course, I was showing up, you know, hungover and tired, you know, at work, because I was like, I had the most amazing night last night, and I met these guys, and this show was awesome, and, um, you know, I was just totally falling in love with the scene, and, uh, yeah, so and then I just walked in one day, and I was laid off. So I was like, oh, damn, well, really, all I really want to do is play, and so, uh, so then I bought a bass, and, uh, and then I started, um, yeah, just kind of looking online and just like getting gigs, and so I started playing down on Lower Broadway. So that really supported me for a long time. So Lower Broadway is, where, is that where the bands, the cover bands, play? yeah, at yeah. The, so uh, Vinny how and I, does you get paid? You just work for tips? Those yeah, bars? you get a small base pay, and then it's all tips, and it's, so it's really like you know you work your ass off. Yeah, you, you got to really ass hustle. Man. Yeah, and so um, yeah, so right at the time that the tips started, uh, we started playing downtown as well, and it was awesome, man. 
Oh, the uh, tip played on Lower Broadway too. Oh uh, well, Benny and I did. Yeah, we started a uh, uh, covers. We, yeah, so we were out fishing one day with a friend. Zach oh, you hunt? You guys fish? I was going to ask you if yeah, you hunt and fish. With yeah. Him. So we were fishing one day, I think on uh, and uh, kind of off Hendersonville on Old Hickory. Yeah, with our friend Zach Shedd, who used to play bass for uh, Hank Three, um, and my old roommate Bill Van Fleet was there, and so I play guitar. Benny plays harmonica. Was that fish on? And, and, yeah, fish on. Well, that was and great. Then, I heard that. Was then good, the, so. Yeah, Zach Shedd on bass and the drummer. So we all three, all four of us were just out fishing, and then Zach got a call because he knew uh, Layla's uh, downtown, and he used to play there all the time. They're like, oh man, they had a band canceled from like midnight to two a.m. What are y'all doing later? And we look around and we're like, oh wait, actually, we're, we're all here. This is all a band. Well, after this, let's just go downtown and play. So, the, so is like, there right, back yeah. lines at those places, or you gotta uh, have gear in your car at all the time? Uh, yeah, it's usually drums and sometimes a bass. They're all, all, all that. Yeah, but stuff. then even then, it's like all in gear, man. So then, um, so then we see what's going on. And you guys and, play uh, Marshall half stacks and stuff, so you have. Oh have, yeah, yeah, and so we even with that, I mean, I was like, sometimes I was just playing in all different amps, like in there, I was like. Mostly brought my twin, uh, which yeah. is like 100 watts. And um, but man, we were so loud. We almost lost a couple of gigs. Uh, and man, we had stuff like um, we were playing downtown, and we had the place packed, man. And we was like a Saturday night. And because like, they came to see Fish on, or was well, yeah, it was just a good night. And walk and, up, crowd. yeah, we were, yeah, and it was just packed. It was a good night. And then this like this kind of this like unassuming lady comes up to the front of the stage, just like. Y'all are too loud. You need uh-huh. to turn it down. Right, yeah. And yeah, the Fender Twin blasts everybody yeah, out. Yeah, and of course, and everything else, and like drums, and then, and I think we had a second guitar player by then, uh, Chris Lore, who produced the uh, Tip albums. So we were just like screaming, rocking band, and so like, you're too loud. And then he's like, God bless him. He's like, Oh yeah, it's too old. You can get the fuck out. <laughs> and then, and then she's like, I'm the owner. Oh, there you go. And That's like, nice. Oh. <laughs> and she storms out and he just like looks at me in a face I'll never forget and just jumps out and I see him like and then like we're still playing because we're like we're in the middle of a song and, and so I see her just like pointing fingers and shouting at him he's just like uh okay all right sorry I guess uh I gotta go and uh, needless to say honestly but then like two days later uh the bar closed and now it's AJ now it's owned by Alan Jackson and I've never been in there since you still hunt and fish <laughs> yes yeah I do um I'm not the best hunter but um uh, but yeah, I do fishing all the you time. You guys man. use a gun or a bow? Uh, I would use a gun, yeah, sometimes. Yeah. But I would just go, um, yeah, with like twenty twos. And, so uh, shooting varmints, shooting uh, uh, rabbits. Yeah, and we stuff. would like, but yeah, we'd go like shoot squirrels. Uh-huh. <laughs> you eat the like, squirrels? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. I never yeah, had. Yeah. I never had cooked squirrels. Yeah, if you well, if you get them like out in the country where they haven't been like you know eating trash and such. I went and squirrel then, hunting like, okay. with a bow, but I never. Oh, got that'd be his, fun. I yeah. got a uh, I got a turkey once with a bow and shot cut his neck off. Oh wow. The only item I've ever killed with a bug. Dude, wow, that's cool. amazing. Chopped his neck off. Man, I was uh, riding my bike down at Shelby Bottoms the other day, and I saw a bobcat. I swear to God, I saw a I bobcat. I hear that's good eating. <laughs> I mean, that was a gnarly animal, you man. You killed those with a 22. Um, yeah, I just couldn't believe I'd seen one. I've only seen, like, one or two. But, yeah, sure enough, I had these, like, you know, spikes on uh-huh. its ears. And it was, like, and it was just, like, wide shoulders. It was, like, yeah, and then I saw turkeys and deer and all sorts of stuff. So There's what do you guys fish too. for? Maybe we like to go jugging and go What's catfish. What's that, catfish? Yeah. yeah, so you get these um, yeah, milk those gardens. big, huge catfish, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you can. Or we'll get channel cats or blue cats. And um, and so, yeah, you just basically you get like a milk jug or something, you know, just close it off full of air. And then you just tie, tie your line to it and uh, put some bait on it and just throw them out and just wait a while. And some, and then when the fish on there, you'll see it like bobbing. Uh-huh. So then you get, you know, you drive the boat up close and you get a net or something. And then, because you only got maybe like just a couple feet, you know, and the fish hasn't been like fighting at all. So it's like got full of life. And so you just get in there and just pull them up real quick and just jump in the boat. <laughs> they taste good? Yeah, they're good, man. We fry them up. It's fun, mm-hmm. man. Yeah. And I, I do know people that like will not eat, um, Catfish, yeah, bottom catfish feeders. at her. Yeah, yeah, and I don't blame it. Because honestly, we don't eat the big ones. But like juvenile ones, you know, if they don't have like spots and whatever, I mean, it's healthy and it just eats like other yeah. little fish. So. I like to fish in the okay. ocean. I live in San Francisco. And oh, cool. Ocean right on. Fish in there, so. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Yeah, we go out in the kayak out oh, in the ocean awesome. and fish. Hell yeah. Yeah. 
Sweet, so man. You, are you making a living playing in the Biters now? Um, yeah, so I've been uh, playing with Biters, and I've uh, also been playing with some other national friends called Blackfoot Gypsies, and just kind of filling in with them. Uh, so it's just enough to pay the rent and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, it has. And so uh, once kind of Tip kind of fizzled out for me, I also kind of stopped playing downtown because those were kind of both related. Uh, but at the same time, does that um, suck playing downtown? It uh, seems honestly, like a man, hard, hard. Yeah, thing to it was. Do. Like, it eventually kind of gave me health problems with my shoulder and my wrist, and I had really bad tendonitis because uh, I couldn't like I couldn't even like drive. I could barely you know hold a pick. But I was like, no, I don't want to miss my gig, man. I want to go play. But I was just like, man, I was really fucking myself. You gotta up. really yeah. play all the time to make money. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing, and you gotta be on call all the time. What about so. this place, the Nashville Palace? Because they yeah. have bands there too, and they uh, pass the tip jar. Around. Yeah, yeah, they do the same thing. So they might get like you know. 20 bucks. Is that the pay. way all these bars are out here in Nashville? Um, yeah, a lot of them. And some of them don't even give a base pay or some of it's like better base pay or whatever. Um, but it's like, yeah, it's all kind of off tip. So a lot of people move to Nashville to, to make it in the music business. Yeah. That's a, yeah. That seems like a uh, not a great thing to do. Uh, well, there is a there is a lot of music business here, so there are that many opportunities to play, which is definitely way different from any other city that I seem to have, like keep traveling to um, so there are that many opportunities here to play uh, but there are that many great uh, musicians so there is a bit of like kind of a competition but it's really more uh, you know encouragement and rather being discouraged by like oh my god that's the most amazing guitar player I've ever seen in my life and I can't play anything that he's playing he's blowing my mind right now um, you know what that's okay because as long as you are the most unique person that you are uh, that's really what it's all about because when I first started playing down in Lower Broadway, it's just like, man, I gotta, I gotta get a Telecaster and a Fender, you know, Deluxe. Oh, to be reverb, like everybody else. And I gotta learn all these country licks. And I played like a couple gigs, and I was like, oh, I really struggled through this. And then in like maybe like the third gig, I kind of like, all right, well, I've, you know. Are started you? drinking a little bit more, and I was like, you know, I'm just going to play the way I play, and yeah. the gig went so much better. Yeah, it's better. much better, people. So much, much better, better. It's like, that. wow, I actually just played the way what I wanted to play. Do you know, Nobody complained about it. Do you know <laughs> Dan Baird, Homemade Sin, you know those bands? Uh, I think so, yeah. And it's Jason like, and the Scorchers? Yes, 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 okay. yes. Mm -hmm. That's a little bit before your time, probably. How old are you? I'm 32. Oh, okay, you're yeah, still a kid. Uh, uh, so you yeah. make a living now playing in the Biden. Well, yeah, yeah. how often so, do they tour? Uh, well, we haven't done as much as we'd like Because he produces year. a lot of stuff. Too. Yeah, so he's been working on that, and we kind of entered in a weird legal battle with the label that I think is kind of finally blowing over. So that kind of like halted the band. Is that Earache? Yeah, with Earache. Uh -huh. and, um, trying to get on a different, on a better label. Yeah. That yeah. last album was on Earache? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And so, uh, and really, that should have been, and that... I think hopefully will be the last one. They had an op the option and they were trying to like pick that up, but they really didn't like, they didn't really do much like promotion or publicity or any like marketing, whatever. So the right. album like could have done a lot better. And there's some, that like, was with the guy who did uh, Lady Gaga, right? Didn't that guy produce Lady Gaga? Um, oh, with like Nico. Um, yeah, I think that was the guy. Yeah. Yeah, Nico did. Yeah, I, some earlier stuff. He did like Melody for Lovers and uh, some early stuff. I'm. He may have had a track on this. Last you know, one, there's but, a there's but a I great think it was Dan Dixon and Tuck that oh, did yeah. it. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. 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 So Dixon. the one before that is what I'm thinking of. Okay. You know what song yeah. that uh, he wrote that's great, but I don't think the Biters ever play. It's called Indigo. You know that? Oh too? yeah, yeah, of course. You guys yeah. ever play that? Yeah, one? yeah, we've rehearsed it. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. the best. Just tell him that's the best. That's his <laughs> best song. I will. Thanks, man. Yeah, we definitely we played that in practice a couple times, and uh, yeah, that was a cool like seven inch uh, album that came out. So. You're way taller than Tuck. <laughs> Does he have a problem with that? Because he's like the leader. Of well, the I wear group. boots, and uh, he loves yeah boots as well. But uh, no, nah, it just gives me a leg up, man. So you have to spread. You have to. Yeah. <laughs> bend, yeah. All right, Ricky Dover. Thanks for coming on. Dude, really thanks so much it. for having Good me, luck. man. Love it. Everything. When's the next biters? Have you guys recorded in the um, Yeah, Biders? so we're working on, uh, Tuck's been here, we're working some uh, songwriters here in town, oh, and uh, yeah, just working on new Biders material. I heard that he wrote, you know this band Czar? Um, Jeff Whalen? Because hmm. I heard this guy, there's this band from, from L.A. called, you probably don't care, but this band called no. Czar yeah. uh, put yeah. out a record that is one of the best albums ever made. It's like Boston. Cool. It's like a perfect album. Wow. But it's, but this guy's a super good songwriter. I heard he was riding with Tuck. So oh, okay, cool. Yeah, he probably knows. Oh, hell yeah, that sounds rad. All right, Ricky Dover Absolutely. Jr. Yes, is your dad named Ricky? Uh, he is, yeah. All right, mm -hmm. all right. Well, yeah good, he's senior. Good, all right, good luck fishing <laughs> and hunting. Right, yeah, thank you, brother. Right, hell yeah. Thanks, man.
It's a rock and roll geek train wreck. <laughs> 